The live series collections are always a big part of Diamond Dynasty right at the launch of every MLB The Show game. For MLB The Show 21, we had 99 Chipper Jones, Alfonso Soriano, and David Ortiz, all who were really wanted at the very beginning of the game. So what I decided to do since we are about two weeks out from MLB The Show 22 was go through with my Twitch chat. Make sure you swing by the live streams, by the way. I do stream basically every day on Twitch. And we predicted all 30 individual teams, all six divisions, and all of the last three league wards for live series collections. These predictions are based off of the previous MLB The Show games and the overall trends that I've seen in live series collections the last few years, but also some of them are just fun guesses. At the end of the day, this is just meant to be a fun conversation going through, thinking about what these live series collections could be looking like in just about two weeks. If you have any opinions, if you think I'm right or wrong, if you enjoy this type of content, let me know in the comments. It's fun sitting here and discussing these type of things leading up to the game even though we don't have news and i would love to have that conversation in the comments with you guys but without further ado let's hop on into my predictions and what i think these cards could be looking like first we have the 30 individual team collections and the big thing is that these overalls change based on how many diamonds how expensive the diamonds are if it's easier to do for the collection you'll usually see a gold if it's a difficult collection to complete it'll be usually a higher overall diamond don't 100% pay attention to what series they are because at the end of the day, they'll just organize those based on what they think is best to spread out the collection sake because these cards are good collection fuel for the big legend and flashback collections that they come out with. So don't always look at these in the perspective of how long you could be using them at launch or whatever. They're kind of going to be collection fuel later on and that's really what their main intent is. Some of them may be great BR cards, some of them may be great cards to add at the start of the year, but keep that in mind when looking at these. So first of all, we have the AL East. For the Orioles, they have a gold Brian Roberts, a Fred McGriff for the Rays, a 90 Mariano Rivera, which I would love for the Yankees, 87 Sean Green for the Jays, and an 86 Wade Boggs for the Red Sox. The AL East is gonna be a pretty expensive one. The Yankees, Jays, and Red Sox are gonna have a pretty solid amount of diamonds between them. And a team like the Yankees could have some expensive ones like Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge if they start off as high diamonds. Same with the Jays. If Vlad starts off as a 90 plus diamond, that's gonna be a pretty expensive team to complete however a team like the red Sox, now they have trevor story i'm sad about that by the way it's gonna have a few diamonds so i think these cards are good opportune legends players that are significant names with each team and could use some love in the very early game moving to the al central i have an 86 overall burt blylevin for the twins an 83 overall eric hosman for the royals an 85 kenny lofton for the guardians 85 overall kirk gibson for the tigers a new legend and an 88 overall mini Minogue so for the White Sox. Again, a mix of cards that are maybe underused could maybe get some love in actual usability for having an early game card, but also some cards that are some favorites. Example, that Kenny Lofton, some variation of that exact same year of card is usually a big favorite. Also, you get to slide in the new legend, Kirk Gibson, who could get a nice early game diamond and then you eventually start releasing the better cards for him. This could be a great avenue for people to give him a go. Now moving to the AL West, I have a 91 Billy Wagner for the Astros, 86 Jay Buhner for the Mariners, 83 overall Mike Piazza for the A's, a 95 overall Troy Gloss for the Angels, and then an 86 U Darvish for the Rangers. Big thing with the AL West is a team like the Angels. It'll be a very expensive collection. Trout and Otani, especially you're gonna cost a lot more than a majority of divisions. So it's a tough collection to fill. So I think a 95 overall is good. And Troy Gloss didn't get enough love on that 97 overall he had last year. If you release him day one, make him a little bit worth it for the AL West, especially the Angels, who's pretty expensive. He could be a nice early game third baseman. So even if you give him that shortstop secondary, man. Now we move to the NL East. Chase Utley for the Phillies. AJ Ramos for the Marlins. Greg Maddox for the Braves, Pedro Martinez for the Mets, and then Vlad Sr. for the Nets. Big thing with them is Pedro getting a Mets card for the first time would be pretty neat. Chase Utley, a new legend, getting an early game diamond would be dope. Greg Maddox is always a fun, high control pitcher. Vlad Sr. would be fun if they treat him a little bit like a Zig series and gave him attributes like that. AJ Ramos, also a BR legend on his own. Now we move to the NL Central, and this is really a weak division, so that's why you see the golds for Billy Hamilton, Dave Parker, 
and Jeff Samarja for the Reds, Pirates, and Cubs. But, you know, you get some solid diamonds in Lou Brock for the Cardinals and then Prince Fielder for the Brewers. I think Fielder and Brock would be very fun early game cards. Also, Samarja could be very glitchy in BR. He was back in the day. And Billy Hamilton got that diamond card this year, so it'd be dope to see him get another somewhat boosted card from his rookie years. To play it in BR a lot like the Adalberto Mondesi or Kevin Kiermeyer types where their swings are just very solid and they have the legit speed. So it would be dope to see Billy Hamilton get that love for a rookie card. Then finally for the NL West, Milestone Fernando Valenzuela, 90 overall Heath Bell, 85 overall Randy Johnson, that is yes, a pitcher card, an 83 overall Dante Bichette, and then an 88 overall Will Clark. Looking at this division, the Dodgers are really the big one. They have a lot of diamonds. So I actually like the idea of Valenzuela being an early game card. I chose a different milestone card than his card in MLB The Show 21, mainly because that was a no-hitter card with really high hits per nine and a 97 overall. We shift that milestone to a different milestone, and I could boost a different attribute based off that. And for this, he'd have like probably 125 stamina or something, which could still be very valuable in the early game. Like his pitch mix would be great at the very launch of the game. I just feel like it'd be fun to give him this card instead of that basic old rookie card that he had start of the year. And then also Randy Johnson, give him an early game card. This one would be not high velo, but you know, he'd have the release have a good slider, and be like a nice little introductory diamond card for him for people that really want to give him a go at launch. But yeah, those are my individual team predictions. So now we move to the division predictions. These are the bigger names overall. They're going to be around 93 to 95, 96 overall in that range. It all depends on, again, how hard the division is to complete. Some divisions are going to be tougher than others. So you have to take all these things into account when choosing these cards. You also have to cover a good amount of positions overall between the six of them. So for the AL, I came up with a 96 overall Jimmy Fox, a 95 overall Grady Sizemore, and a 95 overall Roy Oswald. Big thing with Grady and Oswald, I feel like if they had like somewhat well-rounded early game cards right at launch, it would get people to want to use them more. I feel like when Grady Sizemore dropped, people weren't obligated to use him that much. It reminded me of like Steve Finley back in MLB 20. He had a very good card that dropped. It was very well-rounded, but not many people used him because it was a lot better at the time. Time. And that happened with Grady Sizemore, it felt like. Give him a 95 overall, right off the rip. Great defense, good versus righties will be a fun early game card. And Jimmy Fox is always like a highly touted name. This version of Jimmy would not have the catcher secondary. He is always an end game favorite at catcher. Give him a first base, third base card like this one. He, this one would actually be a little bit more power focused rather than the contact. It'd be a different taste for Jimmy Fox and he'd get that value at the corner infield as an early game card. But there's a reason he does not have the catcher secondary and that comes down to the cards in the NL. So as you see for the NL, I have a David Justice, Joe Torrey, and the same exact card art, Rob Nen, that we had in MLB Show 21. Big thing with these three, I think Joe Torrey is always a fun early game card. His card would be a lot like the Orhe Posada card, except not a switch hitter. But he could actually get a little bit more pop. He'd get a little bit more power love, especially if they choose the right year or right type of card. And he would be a very fun early game catcher. Rob Nen is a closer that really came out a little late. By the time he came out, many people weren't using him in their bullpen. So I like the idea of giving Rob Nen an early game card so people can chase his card a bit and he would be a top tier closer. And in David Justice, I felt like being a World Series award, people didn't think it was worth holding on to him, but if he's an NL East award, give him a younger car with a little bit more speed, maybe a little better defense in left field. This would be a very fun corner outfield card for the early game. I could really see him being nasty as like a, a very big bet. But yeah, the big thing with these six, I wanted to cover a good amount of positions. A couple positions, I didn't really 100% cover like shortstop, for example. Basically, everything else is all touched on. But without further ado, let's go into the big boy collections, the AL, NL, and MLB awards. So for me, for the big MLB collections, there are a couple things I need to look at. First of all, I want them to be good, especially in the very early part of the game where you're not gonna be facing many 95 plus players. These should be players that could get a little bit more love than in years past. If you're gonna include players from previous years, give them a little bit of love this year, being early game cards, but also being collections and pretty expensive. So last year when we had David Ortiz, this card that we had the six series this year was better than his card we had the year before, I felt like. Chipper Jones has always been in the game, it's, it felt like, but this card was better than his previous year cards because 
it gave him more pop. So I think this is the direction that collections are gonna go. Less new names in the collections, but more so about the, the value the cards provide in terms of the positions, but also their value of being used at the right point in the game. So for the AL, I came up with a 99 Jim Tomy. This would be a milestone card. It would be a twins card, but I think this would be a great early game card because this would be a milestone card with elite power versus both sides. Maybe a little worse contact versus lefties, but not bad. And this would be representative of his entire career. So you would give him the third base secondary. For the NL, I came up with a 99 SIG series Ryan Sandberg. And yes, we did have a SIG series Ryan Sandberg back in MLB The Show 20. But the big thing with that card is a little bit lackluster in power. They could definitely bump up the power. Ryan Sandberg, if you give him a little bit more power, give him like 90 to 100 power, plus like the 110 plus contact versus both sides and that diamond defense would be a top tier second baseman for at least a good majority of the year. And then finally, for the MLB collection, Talk about a player that could really use more love under 99 overall, Roberto Clemente in MVP edition. The, the key thing with Clemente this year was in terms of an outfielder, he had the defense, he had the contact, but the power was a little bit lower than some other end game options and he only had 78 speed. You know, the thing is he had cards like that, but they were lefties and it got value in being a lefty when you face a lot of right-handed pitchers. But Clemente felt like he could have been a little bit more beefy and a little bit more loved this year. So it'd be dope to make him the collection award, give him a little bit more power, say like 90 to 100 power versus both sides, or at least versus one side. Give him that great defense and maybe bump his speed up to the low 80s. Now you have a lockdown right fielder that you definitely could get away with using all year, but at the very least he's gonna be really wanted and usable until the biggest names like Willie Mays, Griffey, and all all of those dudes come out. So I like the prospect of making Clemente better than normal and making him really wanted as an MLB collection award. But yeah, those are my thoughts and predictions for the upcoming collections. Whether or not the names of the players are right or the types of cards are right, this is just gonna be a general appearance of how collections look like in case it's your first go around to MLB The Show. Now you have an idea of what these will likely look like. I bet they're gonna keep on trending in the direction they did in MLB 21, where you're gonna see less of the guys like Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, but you're gonna start to see a different mix of names because they're gonna have other legend and flashback collections later on in the year. And the live series collections are just one small piece in the puzzle. It's very exciting to have the new game in a couple weeks and we have not heard much yet. So it's fun to prospect and take guesses and discuss what could happen before we hear any sort of news in a few weeks. Make sure you are subbed here because I'm going to cover all of the tips and information leading into MLB The Show 22, and I will show you how to complete these collections, all the money spent when I get them done. I'll see you all again on a few more videos leading up to the launch of the game. It's lock-in season, your boy is going really hard, so make sure you're tuning into the channel for all the content on launch. I hope to see your beautiful faces there, and I'll see you all again on next video. Deuces.